InstaSpin FOC Launch Pad and Booster Pack Training Series, Part 3, Zero Speed, Low Speed, and Tuning. So let's look at zero speed performance. Obviously you're going to want to set your reference to zero speed. And at this point you're going to want to turn off your force angle. So remember force angle is going to bypass the feedback from our fast observer and just force an angle into the control system. And right now at zero speed we want to actually look at fast behavior and performance. Um, and when force angle is active it's going to be active over the range that you specify in your user.h. So with the settings that we have, which we talk about in the quick start guide, this ends up being 3 hertz, which is 45 RPMs uh, for this motor. But again, we're going to turn this off so we can see the behavior at zero speed. So at zero speed, we have these default settings for the, the speed controller. And all of these uh, this gain comes from is the max current setting. So you know, this does not do any testing during motor identification to actually find out how to tune your speed controller. Uh, because to tune a speed controller, that's a, a mechanical system and you need to know something about the inertia. So all we have is what we call a, a good rule of thumb or a good guess that generally at least lets it be stable for initial operation. But you're going to want to tune this for your own applications. Um, and this can vary quite widely depending on, you know, the inertia of the motor, the size of the motor. So for really high speed small motors, these speed control settings are usually much too stiff and you're going to have to, to detune them. So for this motor, it's actually pretty good. So at zero speed, you'll see that um, the motor isn't moving or it's moving slightly, but it is trying to control zero speed, meaning when it sees a uh, directional acceleration, it fights back based on the tuning of the speed controller, um, either aggressively or softly. So it's, it's not too bad there, but it's also not great. We could stiffen this up. But what's fun to do here is actually look at the behavior of uh, your P and your I term. And so we can tune these way down. Um, so let's, let's look at the operation with just a little bit of P and a very, very small amount of I. And what you'll see here is you're, you're getting almost no fight back. But you'll notice that as I turn the shaft, it's getting stiffer. It's feeling like a spring, like it's, um, like it's compressing. So it's getting a little stiffer every time I turn a little more. And then the eye component, having just a little bit of eye, makes it return. So it kind of un uncoils a spring. So you can think of those two things. Um, the eye is, is your stiffness, kind of how fast it's going to fight back to get where it was. Um, and your P is your initial... Um, how much it's going to fight back um, initially to keep it in the same same speed location. So we can stiffen this up. We want both of these to be more aggressive than they are. So let's try going up a little bit. And you can see it's it's now the spring is compressing more quickly. And the return is, it's still loose, it's sloppy, it, it goes back. We'd like it to actually fight and keep us in one place for more often. So let's get this gain up even higher so that the, the spring compresses more quickly. So... And let's bring this up as well as we go. So stiffer yet. You can see it's getting much stiffer and actually returned a little past where I was. So we may take that eye down a little bit. So that's pretty good. I'm going to go back down a little more. Split the difference. So you can tune this up kind of to your liking. You can see it, it kind of oscillated a little bit when I let it go. That usually means that your gain is just a little too stiff. If you see oscillations, you're going to want to tune down your P. 
even there it's it's moving a little bit so I'll probably come down even a little bit more so this is probably good to do some initial testing so let's do some low speed evaluation in the user's guide it mentions turning on force angle if you're trying to start up um, and that's a, a good path to follow especially if, especially if you have a load it's going to give you a more consistent startup uh, it will start up even without force angle on it will attempt and as soon as fast locks on and gets moving enough um, it will take over and be able to drive it typically to your speed so let's try a couple um, low speed options so this is a uh, 15 rpms per one hertz for this eight pole motor so we could try five hertz and check our speed controller here and it's doing okay you can see it's stable but um, the oscillation it's moving around um, our set point pretty decently so we can tune this a little better if we like probably needs to be slightly stiffer um, and if you add any sort of load remember that the performance here at lower speeds is is based on the back EMF so part of that is the the flux value of the motor um, and this is a motor with 0.035 volts per hertz. Um, so at um, 5 hertz, we're getting 0.035 times 5. So a relatively small amount of flux. But there are motors with much, much lower flux. Uh, the little hobby motors that are very high speed have uh, about a tenth as much, if not less. So 0 0.002 is a very common volts per hertz in the very small hobby motors. Um, so the low speed performance that you'll get from one of those is much uh, much less. You're going to have to run at a higher speed for your bottom end. But you can see even with a load this is not bad and I could uh, tune this even a little stiffer uh, to try to keep uh, my speed control even better. But let's see how low we can go. So if we want to keep dropping this we'll go to 4 hertz. It's doing pretty well, very stable. 3 hertz. And again, at this point, you know, we're not regulating this to, let's say, 5% speed, but with no load, uh, we still have an observer that is tracking and maintaining uh, the speed pretty consistently. And again, any sort of load, if I had any sort of load, it, it gets even better because you get more current signal that you're able to, to put into your calculations as well. So we're moving the load. Let's go lower. 2 hertz. and you're starting to see a little bit of degradation um, it's falling off a little bit you see a little bit in the shaft uh, the angles jumping around a little bit but it's still stable we can go down to one hertz and you s it's still moving it's still stable I put any sort of load on it it continues to drive through that angle and I'll go ahead and try half a hertz see it's basically gone at that point um, it's still stable in the sense that it's it hasn't totally crashed but it's not giving you performance so we we kind of are at the one Hertz mark for this motor with this inverter combination and you might notice that uh, some of my variable overflow checks my red light went off here for a minute um, that's because the flux calculation um, went up just enough, my actual flux that it's measuring went up just enough where it kind of pushed it over that boundary. You don't really have to worry about this at low speed. Uh, this is an overflow that would only happen at high speed. Basically, how much flux could it be calculating based on, on the top end speed? Um, but that is something I'll want to note because if the flux is varying just enough to push me over this edge, then I am going to want to change that and increase my full scale voltage just a little bit to make sure I, I never overflow that value.